We're going to build a digital dial frequency meter to put on my BIDX transmitter. It comes in a surprisingly small package. I was amazed uh, when I found out that was what was in the mail. I'm going to put the parts in when I open the bag in a cigar box so I don't lose anything because there's some real tiny surface mount parts there. This is going to be my first surface mount kit that I've assembled, although about 45 years ago I did go through a soldering class which dealt with surface mount material, but I haven't practiced for 45 years so this should be interesting. It comes in the sealed package, which is good because there's a lot of tiny parts inside there. It's kind of hard to go through the glare, but let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like. Shake the parts down to one side so I don't cut something in two. And we get to see all the magic pieces. There's a lot of really tiny parts in there. You'll need a fine tip soldering iron. It's included some .020 solder. I have some .015 I think I'll use. It gives you a little more control of the solder connection. You download the manual from the a web page and here's the finished look of what we're going to attempt to do. It says to install them in the order shown here. So the very first thing we have is Q1 which is a JFET. Its color is pink and we're going to look on here to figure out where it goes. I see Q1 down here. So we'll look on the board after we find the part and we'll see if we can get it soldered in place. Looking through our stash of parts we find a pink one here. This has got to be the JFET. Here's our green one which is next part to install. So let's take a look, closer look at that and see what we have. Here's our pink JFET it's pink. This may look weird. The reason it's weird is because this is actually inside of a little plastic container. And right down here in the center, right down here is where the JFET really is. So what we're going to need to do is take and come right down here at this little tab, grab that and peel that back, and then that'll open the container up. I'm going to attempt to open this on the camera. I don't know how successful I'll be. I'm going to do it over my cigar box because I don't want to drop it and lose anything. I got a hold of the paper. Okay, I got that peeled off. Got it upside down. And all I got off was the paper identifier, so there's still the part is still underneath there. I've got it out of the container, so now you can see it's got three leads there, which a JFET should have. So the next thing we want to do is I'm going to put it down very carefully, then I'm going to set it on the board and we'll proceed to solder it in place. It's right there. 
procedure says to put a little tiny bit of solder on a pad. I have a little bit of solder on the tip of my iron. I'm going to just try touching the pad there. See if I can get a little solder to go on it. And I have a little solder ball there. Now the next thing is to try to get the part positioned on there with that terminal on the solder ball. As much as I'd love to show you the soldering operation, I have Q1, this Q2 soldered in place, Q1. I learned something. Uh, first I lost and it flipped out two or three times so I cut the lid off the cigar box and began working inside the cigar box so that when it flew it wouldn't go outside of where I could find it. Second thing I learned was you need to be extremely careful when you're in setting these on the circuit board because there's an upside down and a right side up. The right side up one the black domino will stick up quite a little ways and the leads here will be flat down against the board when it's right side up. Q1 got installed upside down twice. Even the second time when I was trying to watch carefully I did it wrong. So hopefully it hasn't been overheated. It shows a little strain from, from uh, right here from having the extra heat because the only, only way to get that off is with solder wick and you're working with some very small parts. So the third thing I learned, I'm soldering these under my microscope where I can actually really see well. Maybe if you had a 10 times uh, light magnifier that'll work fine but to do this with uh, on the camera is next to impossible. So about all I can do is show you the results and hopefully like I said Q1 here is going to be okay. I'll clean all the flux and everything off of everything later on. The nice thing is with the microscope I can really inspect the solder joints and I can really solder with a little bit of uh, assuredness that what I'm doing is right because I can actually see real well. This is my soldering setup. I can look down through the microscope and I can see the board real well. It works real well. I have a magnifier up here. I haven't tried that because the, the uh, microscope works better. So I'm going to continue to use a microscope. This might be your next best option here. Okay, I have the capacitors C1 to C6 soldered in. They went a whole lot easier than the transistor and the FET. So if you don't get discouraged doing the transistor and the FET, because it's a lot easier with the, with the capacitors. They don't have an upside down and a right side up, so that make a difference on them. Okay, the technique that worked for me was I would start out with one pad. I'd put a little dab of solder on the left hand pad of what I'm going to work with. Then I would take and hold the part carefully with the tweezers in my right hand and position it hold it in place and then come in with the left hand and solder it left handed. That worked out pretty well for me. I can do a lot of different things left handed almost as well as right handed so that might be something you could try. That's about as close up as I can get of the solder connection so I don't know if that's good enough to show you anything and what it looks like under the magnifier. They haven't been cleaned up yet. You can see down at the bottom of C5 there's a piece of junk there so when we clean them with alcohol they will look cleaner but there is a nice solder fillet going from the pad up to the end of the capacitors so I think they're 
Well, I know they're a good solder connection because I can see it in the microscope. 